Have you been trying to figure out how to break free from the toxic cycles that seem to be on repeat in your life? Always choosing the wrong person, always ending up losing that great job, never quite ever hitting that level of success that you've wanted to hit or that you know you're destined to hit. Never quite finding happiness, peace, and joy, and you almost get there, and then suddenly the other shoe drops. My name is Dr. Lisa Burr, and I am a doctor of metaphysics and divinity, so I cannot write your prescription, but I can recommend a good crystal. And we are in the midst of our 88 Days to Manifest Your Best Life. Today is... Day 40, and we're going to talk all about that. How do you finally break the cycle? How do you reprogram your body, your being, so that it stops seeking out toxic people, toxic situations? It stops going through the self-sabotage loop. It stops running the programs that your parents, your teachers, your peers, all these different people throughout your life have inadvertently and unknowingly taught you and they've placed within you. So I teach my clients to do these this in a probably a little bit of a unique way and I hope you'll find that it is. I teach my clients and I help my clients through this process by making sure that not only do they forgive the other person, but they forgive themselves. Forgiveness of self is the biggest piece I feel that is missed in the healing shadow work process, in the cycle breaking process. If you have no compassion for yourself, you have no compassion for anyone else. You can't. It's not truly compassion. It is the desire to fix that other person. It is you running away from your own problems. It is codependency. It's a, it's numerous things, but it's not actually having compassion for that other person because you don't even know how to. So we're going to talk about having compassion for self first today. This is a process guys. So just know you're going to come back for a few more videos here, but let's talk about compassion first. And let's talk about why it's so important to have compassion for your self. You know, there is a passage in the Bible that says do unto others as you would have them do unto you or something along those lines, right? I'm badly paraphrasing, right? Um, that we're to love one another as we love ourselves. That we're to treat our neighbor as we would treat ourselves. If that's the case, then that's probably why the world is in such a crappy situation. <laughs> because most of us don't even know how to love ourselves. Most of us have no idea how to love ourselves. So there's no possible way we're going to know how to love somebody else or how to teach that other person how to love ourselves, how to love us. Now, where did this whole big, like, I don't love myself. And I'm not talking about it in a narcissistic way, guys. Like we like, let's don't go to that extreme. You guys know what I'm talking about. Like a healthy love of self. So when, and, and how did this happen? How do we not grow to love ourselves? Depending upon who we were in our childhood, if you were the fixer, if you got the brunt of the blame, so you were the doer, in other words, you were the scapegoat, um, those can be like different positions in the family. Um, sometimes like well, you'll hear middle children, or like a middle children's syndrome, middle child syndrome, where they don't feel like they were, and they probably didn't get enough attention and, and all of that from their parents because the parents don't value them in their perception, then they don't value themselves. There's a number of different reasons why we don't grow up loving ourselves. And I'm going to say something as a Gen Xer, our boomer parents were not necessarily equipped to like show us like fantastic love. Can I just say that and be honest with you? Like, I think they probably did better than their parents. I don't even know what that generation is called. Um, but they were so busy trying to be sure that they provided a life for us. Their parents lived through some stuff, right? So our grandparents lived through like depression, World War II, 
you know, tail end of World War One, maybe not, maybe, maybe not bad economic times. It was just survival. And there wasn't like this huge, like spiritual, like, oh, let's really just get into who we are spiritually, right? There wasn't a great awakening at that time. Everything was very, very, very much leaning in dogmatic religion. So because of that, they weren't able to show love. The boomer parents were like, they learned from their parents that the language of love is provision. Um, and they were like, oh, I trust you, right? They, they just, they tried to like get us prepared to be out in this big world. And, and, and so uh, we were left alone. <laughs> you know, there's some, some, some folks will call us feral. But there was a little bit of, you know, have you hugged your kid today kind of stuff. But then for us, Gen Xers, we were like, this is crap. Like we took on all of this garbage from our parents and our grandparents and our aunties and everything. But then we came, we grew up and came up through and became adults during the beginning of the information age, during the beginning of the internet and cell phones and da, 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 all this stuff. So we learned better. I didn't mean for this to turn to a Gen X discussion, but this is, I'm, this is, we're going somewhere with this because we learned better. We raised hopefully our children differently. We cared about their feelings. We cared about their emotions. We wanted them to express it because we understood how crappy it was to have it all bottled up. Where am I going with this? Why is this so important? Because we as Gen Xers and definitely the boomers were not taught how to have compassion for ourselves. We were taught toughen up, don't cry. Emotions are for weak people. There was no time for that. No time, no crying in baseball. There was no time for all of that. We just took it. And if something was going wrong, we had to fix it. So we took on all of that. So when mom and dad got divorced, we took that on. It was our fault. When we were being mistreated, we took that on. It was our fault. When we felt lonely, alone, like, oh, God, what's wrong with you? We took that on because it was our fault. We don't have, we have not learned how to have compassion for ourselves. So the first thing to do is to learn how to have compassion for yourself. That is the first thing to do. And I'm going to give you some, a real, some real quick tips on how to do it. First of all, I want you to write down all the things you don't like about yourself. All of them. I want you to write down every last one. As many as you can remember. I want you to write down every time you feel like you failed. I want you to write down every time you feel like you were a failure. I want you to write down everything. And then I want you to go through each and every one of those and say, I forgive myself. Say, I forgive you, Lisa. I forgive you, Mary. I forgive you, John. I forgive you. I forgive you. This was not your fault. You didn't know any better. You did the best that you could. And you're still here. Can you do that? And then after every one of those telling yourself you forgive yourself, then tell yourself, I love you. When you're done with all that, look in the mirror. I love you. And you're amazing. I love you. I love myself and I am amazing. Okay, now after we get done with all that heaviness, come on back for tomorrow, okay? All right, guys. Peace, love, blessings, and joy be unto you today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. And never forget, give permission to your purpose to provide for your person. I will see you tomorrow.